Okay, so the thing to understand about the chain rule is that you're looking at it as, you know, if you have f of g of x, instead of doing the derivative all at once, you're doing the derivative of f as a function of g, as though the as though the inside function is the variable. Okay, so you're doing the outside as a function of whatever's on the inside. So outside kind of with respect to inside and then inside with respect to x. If there's three functions, well, it would be a, a chain of three things. Okay? So this you're doing something squared. You're just ignoring what's inside. The derivative of something squared is 2 times that something, right? So it's 2 times 3x squared plus 1. But then you need to do the derivative of the inside, right? It's not just this. You need to multiply that by 6x, right? That's the derivative of the inside. So you have that, kind of the derivative of the outside with respect to inside. And then that's derivative of the inside. If you multiplied that all out now, you'd get exactly the same thing as if you did this way. All right. Um, if you did this, 9x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 1. If you do the derivative of this by expanding first, what do you get? 36x to the third plus 12x. If you simplify that, you get exactly the same thing. 36x to the third plus 12x. Okay, so either way, it's the same same derivative. Uh, we're going to leave this for a minute. This is just so maybe now understand the notation. Uh, if you're using this notation, uh, if you're using this notation, f prime of x, it's easy to say if you want the derivative at two, for instance, you can just say find f prime at two. This other notation, it's not so easy to say, well, you want f prime at a certain value. This means you want dy du evaluated at u equals 9. I think some of you who were trying this last time were making it more complicated than it needs to be. If you want, if you want that derivative, just use the function that relates y and u. All right, you have a function here, y related to u. So dy du is 2 times u. If you want it evaluated at 9, then it's 2 times 9 or 18. All right? If you want the derivative of u with respect to x, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do this now anyways. If you want the derivative of u with respect to x, look at the function that relates those two things. Okay? Oops. doing that. Um, so you have, if you want du dx. <coughs> now I've uh, shifted it all around and made a mess of it, but if you look at that function then, 15x squared plus 2. If you wanted to evaluate at x equals 4, put that in, right? 15, 4 squared plus 2 which is what here, uh, 242 or something like that. If you want this one, if you want dy dx, and you have only two functions given separately like this, like these are not combined together, you have two choices here. You could either combine them together. I don't know if you want to put method one here. You could combine them together and say if y is a function of u and u is a function of x, then y as a function of x is going to be like u squared, or in other words, 5x to the third plus 2x squared. Right? You can you can either substitute this in, right? You can replace it with that, and then do the derivative using the chain rule, which would be what would it be? The derivative of something squared is two times that something. And then you got to times by the derivative of the inside, which is what we had up above there. 15x squared plus 
2. And we've already found those two derivatives. So, and it, if if you want, you can multiply that out, but you don't have to, because in some ways, su if you're subbing in a value, it's easier to work it out this way rather than doing anything else with it. Um, I guess method two is just to keep it separate and find the derivative of each one separately, right? Not really that it's that much different, but if you kept it separate and said, I need uh, dy dx is dy du times du dx, take those two things that you just found, you had 2u times 15x squared plus 2, and then you just have to replace at that point, right? You either find the derivative first and then replace it, or replace it first. Do the substitution first or second, it doesn't matter, right? So this would be whatever u, the function u is 5x to the third plus 2x, and then that other part of it. Okay, so do that substitution first or second. Doesn't matter. But it's going to give you the same thing. And then, of course, you could sub in x equals 1. I won't bother doing that right now. If you're subbing in x equals 1, you have to make that change, right? So that you can, so that you can sub in the x. Uh, this is a similar thing here, only in this kind of notation. Uh, I'm thinking it's better if we leave a couple of these for now. I want you to try working with the chain rule here. Th these these I set up originally where I gave you the two functions already separated, but I, in an effort to try and get at the concept. But I think, and then looking at it graphically, um, I think it might be better to just do these intuitively using the chain rule first and then going back to that other stuff. We already said that, or we looked at the derivative of cos 5x is not just minus sine 5x, right? If there's something other than just x in there, if there's a function within there, it's that, but you have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside, right? You, you look at it as cos of something inside there, so it's minus sine of whatever that is, but then you need to do times the derivative of what's inside, right? If this is the inside function, it's going to be minus sine of that times the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the inside? Just a 5, right? So probably you'll be able to just write that, right? Minus sine of 5x. This is the derivative. When you do, it, when you do the derivative of cosine of something with a number in here, the amplitude of the derivative gets quite a bit bigger. Okay, the amplitude of the in, of of this function gets quite a bit bigger. Okay, the fact that this number is here, if you've done principles of math 12, then you know that what that number in front of a trig function does. If you're going to graph sine x and you change it to five sine x, how does that change the the function? Five times higher, right? So if if sine is like that this is five times higher like this. There's a good question in one of your assignments about that that talks about uh, an engine that's described by a trig function where you look at the, der the derivative of what it represents and if you double the, how fast the engine's going, why does it have some effect on this? And it has to do with that number affecting derivatives. Uh, but that's for you to think about when you get there. Can you try the rest of these functions on this page, writing the derivative of each one? This one, this one might not look like something that you need the, the chain rule. You could do this one with the, the quotient rule if you want. Or you could use the chain rule depending on what you prefer. I would actually like you to do that one two ways. Use the quotient rule for that and use the chain rule. And just confirm that they're, for this one, confirm that they're the same. You could do, for both of these actually, you could do that. If you if you write it as, I mean, if you write this as something to the power of negative 1, then you can use the chain rule. If you leave it as is, you probably need to use the quotient rule where the top function is 1. All right, take some time to do that. Just remember that the answers are at the back of that section. Okay, you go to the end of that section, there's answers there for those questions.